Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are going through every company in the S&P 500 and today is a Legion PLC ticker ALLE. In the next five minutes, I will cover my valuation of this company and what I think of the business quality for this company. Let's get started quickly. The industry is building products. So I really want to understand kind of what type of building products. So they have manufacture and sell mechanical and electronic security products and solutions worldwide. Door closers, controls, door and door system, electronic security, electric biometrics, sounds like security, lock sets, portable locks, key systems, workforce productivity. Okay, sells to end users in commercial, institutional, residential facilities, uh, CISA, Interflex, Schlag. Okay, so, so it's a distribution and retail channels. So this kind of manufactures, so it's, it's only in 2013, that's pretty recent. Um, although that makes me think that there's something going on here because it's unlikely they built their whole business since then. So um, kind of an interesting, I don't know a lot about that. So we're going to really have to dive into the numbers. Neither the beta or the share turnover is kind of significant. So let's look on return on invested capital. So our data here goes back to 2011. And it looks like every year since they uh, since the data goes back, we, we have profits. So I like 10 straight years of profits. That's a good sign. Um, the numbers are all over the place. Um, if we maybe take 2014 as the first true year where they've kind of stabilized, it looks pretty good. Since then, you've had 13%, 10, 14, 15, 21, 18, 14. The numbers are certainly fluctuating, but they're positive and they're all double digits. So I'm really excited about that. With a little bit of debt, you could definitely lever this up to be an attractive return on equity, which at least what we're seeing here suggests that's what it is. So you have all double digit 10 year median returns. That's a good sign and positive return on equity of 48%. So the 10 year Kagers aren't calculating because the 2011 data isn't complete and the 2012 data isn't complete. So we're gonna have to judge without that data. PE ratio of 24, that's a bit high. Price to book of 12 is high. Um, again, I'd, I'd like this to be under 15, but again, with the right growth, we could justify higher. So without our 10-year Kagers, let's just look at gross profit margins. Looks pretty stable. So 40, 40, 41, 40, 42, 44, 44, 43, 43, 43. So pretty stable gross profit margins. That's a good sign. Indicates a relatively high quality business. I like what I'm seeing there. The only downside here is it does not look like there's much growth at all. So you begin the decade at around 810 million in gross profit. You end at 1.1 billion. That's very little growth. A lot of years, the revenue growth is pretty flat. Um, I mean, you're getting single digit growth, but nothing, nothing fantastic. Operating profit doesn't even double in the decade. And you see earnings per share is up about 50% across the decade. That's really not enough to make me excited about paying a PE of 24. So let's see what else we can see on the income statement. Um, net income doubled in a decade, which is basically 7% returns in a year. And shares have gone down a little bit. So there's been a little bit of share buybacks um, helping to, to bridge the gap between the operating profit change and the net income doubling. So although they haven't lost money in any year, it's just, just nothing really exciting here. This is a pretty low growth, no growth business. Um, let's look at the balance sheet. We are using some debt to give us a little bit of leverage, which you can see they have about one one and a half billion dollars in debt. Um, which isn't much on their market cap, about 10% of the market cap. Um, let's see cash flow. So again, every year positive cash flow from operations, that's a very good sign. They're not having to invest a lot of it in property, plant, and equipment. This is why they're able to maintain a relatively good return on invested capital. And they're using that money to pay dividends and to buy back shares. Unfortunately, there's not much growth here. So despite having a GERD return on invested capital, it's really hard to justify a PE ratio of 24. If you're not growing or if you're growing only a little bit, then you really need to pay, you know, no growth companies is like a PE of eight to be attractive and get double digit returns. If you're growing a little bit, you can justify a PE of 10, 12, you know, 13. If you're growing two, 3%, which is what you're seeing in a lot of these years. So, I would want to pay maybe a PE of 13 or 14 for this business. It is a good business. They are paying you dividends, um, but it's really not enough here to be attractive. So despite being a good business, 
I don't see enough growth to see it as a long-term compounder. And so for that reason, I would pass on it today and I would pass on it from the watch list because unless something changes in this business, there's not a lot of long-term growth I anticipate. They're probably maxed out in terms of their market share. And so for me, Allegion is a pass and I won't be pursuing it further after this analysis. So hit this like hit the like button on this video if you want to learn if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon in order to get notifications for future videos. Thank you for listening and until next time, stop paying fees and start building wealth.